Welcome to my workshop. Well, here we are. It's the middle of August. The rain is pouring down. And it's a typical English weekend. I'm supposed to be having a week off relaxing, but as the weather is so appalling, I've decided I'd come into the workshop and make something. So what I'm going to do in this video is something I've been putting off for a long time, but I've always wanted to make. I'm going to have a go at making a deck chair. Fairly easy, I hear you cry. With this project, like so many of mine, there's always a twist. So what I want to make is a double deck chair. So a traditional English seaside deck chair, but made for two. Sounds simple, doesn't it? I haven't got a design, but I have got a plank of wood. So let's see if we can do it. Now the first job is to mill the wood. So I'm going to be using a bit of beech, and I'm going to mill this into a variety of two by one pieces. Now this is proper two by one, not the kind of two by one you would get from the wood yard, which is actually inch and three quarters by three quarters. I want to keep the sides of the deck chair as thin as I can while still keeping some kind of strength, which is one of the reasons why I'm using beech. So as you can see, I've now milled all the wood. So I'm going to start with the sides. So I've got two pieces of wood here, four foot long or 1.2 in new money. And it's what I would refer to as two by one, but if you're used to working in metric, that's 50 mil by 25 mil. And the first job is to cut some tenons on the end. Now I could cut some square tenons, uh, but on this occasion, I've got a new tool. This is one I managed to pick up in an antique shop or a tool fair. Um, it's an old, I think it's an old chair bodger's tool. And what it does, it cuts a circular tenon. So I need to cut a, a 28 millimetre hole here. And then that goes on the end of the piece of wood I'm joining into it. Sounds perfect. So I'm going to come probably 50 mil in from each end and that's where I'm going to cut my hole. Whilst I'm also doing it, I'm just going to cut, take off a 45 degree angle there so I can round out the edges here. I want a little bit of a circular bevel so I'll put that on the bandsaw and I'll quickly sand those edges off. Um, and then that will be ready to go. Right, so that's the sides done with a hole in the end and I've beveled the end off and in a moment when I sand everything down I shall sand that round into a nice circle. So here are the cross pieces, again I've got two of them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in 25mm from each end Now these pieces are 45 millimetres wide and I want to cut 15 mil off of that, so half of 15 mil is seven on either side. Yep, so what I should have left in the end is a piece that's about 30 mil by 25, which is about what I want. So here we are, we've cut a little bit of a tenon there, we now need to make that round. In order to cut the circular tenon, I'm going to be using one or two unusual tools. This is one of my wheelwright's tools, and this is called a spoke pointer. What you have is a blade inside this cone of metal. Once it goes in my electric drill, on the top of there, it will whiz around at high speeds, and it cuts a little bit of a point there, which then gets it ready for the next tool that I want to use. Now I have a whole variety of different versions of this tool. This is a, one that I managed to buy quite recently from a, an antique tool sale. All it does is cuts a circular tenon. Now this one is not adjustable for size, it only cuts a 28 millimetre hole, which I'm sure if you're a chair bodger is marvellous. And then it'll fit over the top of here, again, once I've cut my little bit of a point, whiz rounds at high speeds, and that will cut the tenon. So the first one is the spoke pointer. 
and as you can see, let's just cut the top of that. And then that means that this now fits nice and snugly over the top. And when we're ready, off we go. So as you can see, that managed to cut a fairly decent circular tenon. As you can see, that's the first frame made. I'm now going to do exactly the same again, but with a slightly wider frame, so it'll fit on the outside of here. It all makes sense in a moment when we actually get to put it all together. So through the wonders of video, you won't have to watch that. I'll just get on and do it. When you see it like this, you see it's quite a clever design. It's not something I'm going to claim credit for. This is a design which is lost in the midst of time. But what you end up with is three, three frames. The first frame I made comes out and becomes the start of the seat. Then there's a slightly wider frame, which becomes the main legs and the back. And then I've made a third frame, which only has one cross piece, which is going to be the support on the back here. Now, the important bits to bear in mind is the distance from here to here needs to be exactly the same as the distance from there to there. So when it all folds up later on, it all folds up nice and evenly. Now there's a bolt that goes through here, there's a bolt that goes through there, and then I'm going to cut a couple of notches on this bit here so that we can then adjust the height of the seat and the back. As you can see, the frame is now assembled. Although I haven't glued it together yet, that will come later. I'm ready to start thinking about the covering. Now, as luck would have it, I've got this fine piece of material here, which is an off-cut with an upholstery material. It's very hard to get deck chair material in this kind of width. Plus the fact that I think it's rather a cliche material. I fancy something a little bit stylish. So, you need to measure between this rail and this rail here. And that's one metre and five centimetres. And you need to allow... Now if you were using a proper deck chair material, that's a very close weave material, very strong. Um, upholstery material isn't quite that good. What I'm going to be doing is making it almost like a double thickness sleeve. So that will fit round the rail like that round the bottom rail and I'll sew it at the back and probably sew it down the sides as well. Now I don't claim to be great at sewing, but I get by. So, I need to make the sleeve. I want to make it 107. And then having got it where I want it, I'm now going to pin it. Make sure you don't go into the bottom layer. If sewing is your thing, you may want to look away now because this could be painful for you. Now I am cheating and using a sewing machine here. A number of the, the ladies in my family be remarkably good in using sewing machines. I had an elderly aunt who was particularly good. Um, and I'm sure she'd now be turning in her grave. But the way to look at it is at least I'm doing it. So as you can see I now have my sleeve and I I've taken two lines of stitching through here and I suspect before I finish I shall probably put a third one in as well just to make sure that's really, really strong. But what I do want to do now is to put a little pocket at the top. And this is to stop the whole thing twisting round on the seat. And this pocket needs to be about 60 mil, I suppose. So I shall put it just about there. Again, if you're looking to see a video on how to work a sewing machine, 
this is probably not the one for you. So here we are, the moment of truth has approached. Finally we get to assemble it all and find out if it actually works. So here's our sleeve of material. Now we've got to make sure we get this round the right way. And I reckon we want it this way. So this bit slides over that one. And we'll let that just sit down there for a moment while we glue this all together. Now, glue is what's going to hold this together, so don't be shy with the amount of glue you use if you think of trying one of these for yourself. Excess glue can always be wiped off afterwards, but it's hard to actually get any more inside the joint if you've not done enough. So we're going checking to make sure we've got it round the right way. And then that's the bottom frame now assembled. Well here we are, the finished result. I rather like this. <laughs> I think I'm going to spend quite a lot of time in this. Now hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, remember to sign up for the blog, tomgreencraft.com or find me on Facebook and you'll find out some more about the kind of things that I'm up to. Thanks for watching. In the meantime, it's a Sunday afternoon. I'm sitting in what has got to be the most stylish deck chair in Norfolk. So I'm going to take good advantage of it and have a sleep. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.